Infinity of sunburnt sand and sagebrush sweltering in the dry. A hundred thousand square miles of challenge. This is the state of Nevada. Sixth largest in the Union, 48th in population. The few people in Nevada are creating in our United States a new frontier of opportunity. Nevada today is a place of up-to-date cities, offering the most modern improvements. The beginnings of industry, large-scale mechanized mining, a profitable agricultural enterprise, ingenious irrigation system, fine educational activity, and a hard-working progressive population, all challenging the future. Shaped like a native Paiute Indian tomahawk, Nevada is bounded by Oregon and Idaho to the north, Utah and Arizona to the east, and California to the west, with its Sierra Nevada range intercepting the rain winds from the Pacific and producing a most unusual climate for the sagebrush state. 320 days of dry, bright sunshine. Only 10 inches of rainfall. Yet here in the state of least water is successful agriculture. Nevada has the smallest number of farm and ranch operators in the nation, with only 6% of the land area under active cultivation. From sagebrush and sand, acres of oases. Ask a Nevada farmer how it's done, and he'll point to the nearest mountain slope. The Nevada water trick is worked with snow. Early each spring, the snow crop is tested for depth, water content, and probable runoff. This runoff is channeled into reclamation projects for future irrigation needs. Forecasts for more than 10 years now have been 98% accurate. This spring harvest from melting snow flows into rivers, which are the most challenging on Earth decreasing in flow when their water is most desperately needed. Many, with no outlet to the ocean, seep away, sink into the bottomless sand, and disappear in desert dust. This challenge has been met with a chain of reclamation dams to store water for rainless days. Rye Patch Dam, holding the snow-swollen flow of the Humboldt River, has made Lovelock Valley famous as the Nile Valley of Nevada. Lahontan Dam in the Newlands Reclamation Project traps the waters of the Carson River for release as needed to the 80,000 acres now under cultivation in Churchill County. More reclamation projects, irrigation canals, sluice gates, leading to more water for greater diversification of enterprises. This is the ever-present need of Nevada farmers and the shape of the future. Water for the premium tomato seedlings of Moapa Valley, which give eastern growers a head start on their own crops. Water for juicy strawberries. Water for dry onions. Nevada heart of gold melons. Long-eared corn. Great flat fields of barley, rye, oats, wheat, and alfalfa. Nevada farmers face the challenge of larger scale operations possible with ever increasing water supplies. More water for more people and their pursuit of a livelihood. And progress. The Nevada developed Fallon Turkey is becoming famous as a household word all over the country for the best in holiday feasts. More white meat on a bird to fit the average roasting pan. On the experimental farm at Fallon, Nevada, new feeding and breeding methods are being developed constantly to help irrigation ranchers do more diversified farming, dairying, and poultry raising. All of Nevada's farm eggs, however, aren't in one basket. That's why 14 of Nevada's 17 counties 
make a large part of their income from poultry and stock raising, as well as from farming and dairying. Here cows can be fed on year-round crops of green fodder. This sun-soaked diet helps produce high-grade milk and pasture-rich butter. Thrifty Nevada ranchers are also raising pens of top quality hogs, perky porkers which fatten fast. These little piggies go to market as heavyweight champions. Each dawn also rises on larger flocks for the textile industries. Sheep now outnumber all other animals in Nevada's livestock grazing enterprise. With the cooperation of the U.S. Grazing Service and the Forestry Service, Nevada is developing sheep raising on a major scale using public domain rangelands. Shepherds are today handling yearly flocks of more than 80,000 rambules, and shearing time is a big business operation with automatic equipment and assembly line techniques. A valuable crop of wool for the national market. Sheepish and shorn raring to grow new heavy woolies in record time. Down on the sagebrush of the mountain valleys, half a million shorthorns fatten for the beefsteak market. With its agricultural production to supply winter forage crops and great open ranges for spring, summer and autumn grazing, Nevada has literally taken the challenge right by the horns to become a great cattle producing country. The white-faced Herefords, which are the best rustlers for fodder on any kind of range, are rounded up twice a year, once for fall shipment to market and again for spring branding. More than 2,000 brands are registered in Nevada. Trademarks in a big business filing system for a growing industry. Instead of walking the meat off their beeves, some motor-minded cattlemen save weight by taking their critters and trucks and trailers to railroad shipping points. Another way for meeting the challenge of wide open spaces. and the interstate freight carriers that haul out the products of Nevada's multi-million dollar ranching and agricultural industry bring back the fuel, machinery and manufactured goods that make large-scale productivity possible. Nevada became known to the entire world in 1859, heralded as the wealthiest mining area in the history of the earth. The Conestoga wagons rolled in from the east, and 49ers doubled back from the Gold Coast of California. Before, most prospectors had rushed right through Nevada. Only a few had paused to placer mine for gold. It was in the black clay of Nevada, cursed as a nuisance by these early gold diggers, that silver ore was discovered. Silver, a saying phenomenal values per ton of ore. Boom, went Nevada. Railroad tracks laid, trains rolled to take out the treasure and return with the raw materials for more building lumber, nails, bricks and mortar to build a great state, dynamite to blast out the treasure. For 20 years, hundreds of million dollars worth poured out on the world from Nevada. Here was the silver lining, the fabulous Comstock load. And then the market price dropped. Silver mining was no longer a profitable business. closed mine in Nevada doesn't always mean the ore has given out. 
Sometimes the market price for a mineral has fallen so low, it doesn't pay mining companies to operate. Towns become ghosts, tombstones of vanished dreams. Mining is like any other business, depending on market conditions. When demand goes up, or cheaper methods are developed for recovering the ore, or when rich new deposits of the ore are discovered near the old diggings, mines and mining camps come to life again. And so the cycle goes in every mining area of the world around. The graveyards of Nevada are full of men from all over the world who made rich strikes of ore in the turbulent past. In violence and in chance, the treasures of Nevada were tapped by adventurers who accepted all challenges. The treasure map of Nevada is still rich with commercial minerals. Silver, gold, copper, lead, zinc, tungsten, gypsum, silica, turquoise, rubies, sandstone, barite, perlite, pumice, brucite. New era bonanzas in the ground. Today, copper is booming. Out of the open pit mine at Ruth, Nevada, one of the world's largest, 18,000 tons of copper ore are being redoubled a day, and the end is not in sight. From Nevada's huge copper smelting plant at McGill flows a torrent of the molten electric metal. Copper to be drawn into fine wires for electrical motors. Copper cable for conducting electricity. Copper alloys also for cooking utensils and a million daily needs. From great deposits on the surface of Clark County, limestone is moved by power conveyors. The white rock is crushed and separated for shipment in a nearby modern processing plant. Some speeds to sugar refineries and steel mills. The bulk is converted into final form right in Nevada. Kill baked and processed into lime, main substance for the wall surfacing of the western construction industry. Nevada was once the bed of an ancient sea. On the bottom of these prehistoric waters was formed diatomite, the fossilized remains of one-celled microscopic plants. Diatomite's big use is as an insulating and filtering agent. But here, the snowy material is prepared for use in paper manufacture. It takes more than wood pulp to make good paper. Mining today in Nevada is indeed organized like all other business. Men working to make supply meet demand with diversification of activity. Here, gypsum is being processed. From gypsum is made wallboard, high on the list of building material in demand. Nevada supplies the four walls for many a home. From Beatty, fluorospar for hydrofluoric acid, used by some refineries in the manufacture of high-octane aviation gasoline, the creation of refrigeration fluid, and in the making of aluminum, the metal of tomorrow. At Tungsten, Nevada, bulldozers rip off the surface of the earth to expose deposits of shelite ore. In the dark of night, these are inspected with ultraviolet rays. If there is tungsten in the ground, it fluoresces. Scientific prospecting. Shafts are sunk and large-scale mining starts. In these underground factories of Nevada, labor the daring men who daily meet the challenge in the rich-veined walls with the most modern equipment. From finding the ore to refining the mineral with the flotation recovery process, electric power and mechanization team up with the men of Nevada to bring forth tungsten, a handful of shining lights from the depths of the earth. Tungsten is an important element in the manufacture of light bulb filaments and for the strength and high grade tool steel. Nevada silica sand, 
With more efficient large-scale operation, it's now possible to mine the vast desert deposits of non-metallic minerals, absorb the cost of shipping this raw material to factories in other states, and still meet market competition on the finished product. The silica sand is fused into glassware hundreds of miles away in the factories of other states. From man-made canyons deep in the desert mountains of Nevada, great deposits of brucite and magnesite are blasted. Dynamiters carefully funnel in the explosive charge. Landslides of brucite, raw material for fire bricks, fire clay and ceramics were sailed to the entire nation. This section of Nevada around Gabs is correctly called Mineral County. Improved power equipment, such as this mighty desert battleship at Battle Mountain Goldfields, today gives higher production at lower cost, putting more profit in placer mining. Gold and silver are still important Nevada money makers. Precious gold is panned the modern way, yet still with precious water. Old diggings at Con Collar Silver Mine near Virginia City also have been given new life by the power of the diesel and the gasoline engine. And with improved methods of recovery, the cyanide process, lower grade silver ore, which before might have been left in the tailings, can now be poured into bars of silver. Nevada's best for the silversmith. Hand wrought art objects and the manufactured articles of industry. Deep in the natural canyon between Nevada and Arizona, another challenge has been faced with Hoover Dam and other hydroelectric projects on the Colorado River. Power for industry, low cost electrical energy to put new profit in old mines. Now, from the once abandoned underground mining shafts at Pioche, lead and zinc ores are being pulled out by Hoover Dam Power to meet competitive price requirements for the needs of everyday life. Zinc for galvanizing water heaters, pipes, wire and sheet metal, and for making brass. Lead for high-test gasoline, storage batteries, good paint products. To further develop new processes for the electrolytic extraction of metal from ore, the U.S. Bureau of Mines operates a pilot plant at Boulder City near Hoover Dam. Discoveries here may help create future industry in Nevada and benefits for the entire nation. The town of Henderson, built for war worker housing, may someday become an important American city. Because of the power source in nearby Hoover Dam, here was constructed a huge basic magnesium plant. This mammoth plant was bought from the federal government by the far-sighted people of Nevada to encourage industry to locate itself in the state. Here, near power, water, and the sources of raw material supply are the facilities for the ultimate exploitation of Nevada's mineral treasure, a challenge to bring more people in manufacturing to Nevada. To create a tourist trade and for the pleasure of her own people, Nevada has constructed a network of fine roads, motor trails to scenery and sport. Tahoe, lake of many moods, is world known as a vacationist paradise. And along its forested shores are sylvan retreats where the camper can pitch a tent for outdoor living and be a backwoods beachcomber in sand and sun. Lake Mead, largest man-made body of water in the world. Formed by Hoover Dam, the Canyon Lake is fast becoming famous as a recreation center for swimming, boating, and fishing. Meeting the challenge of limited water resources, Nevada's state-sponsored fish hatcheries spawn finny livestock by the millions to ensure a growing supply of nibbles and bites 
and big ones that didn't get away. A good catch of trout and black bass is planted each year for the hooks of Nevada anglers. And the fishing is as spectacular as the surrounding scenery. For every pool of water, canyon lake, stream and river is thoroughly stocked with rod and reel excitement. From mountain slopes full of fleet-footed deer to lake swamps flush with wild duck, Nevada provides the Nimrod with all kinds of fair game for his hunting pleasure and skeet shoots for his or her practice. A fair hand with a shooting iron can always keep in form with the flying clay pigeons. Tourists are population and Nevada does its best to attract them with comfortable resort hotels and guest ranches. High in the saddle on a year-round bridal path. Western atmosphere with every convenience from swimming pools to taxi cabs and your hometown paper under a faithful desert sun. The early West in modern splendor. Nevada is one sound state when it comes to showing a good time to its guests. At Reno and Las Vegas and in nearly every town in the state are carnivals of Western fun and frolic from Main Street parades to rip-roaring rodeos. A rodeo in Nevada is the old-fashioned real thing. Ride on, cowboy. Hard playing, even in their recreation, Nevadans like a challenge. There's still more than memories of the Old West alive in Nevada today. Indian art. She works in the tradition of her ancestors. A must down Nevada's memory lane is the bottle house at Rylite. Walls of glass bottles, a ghostly monument to a nearby mining boom. Mysterious Stokes Castle, old guardhouse, aged sentinel high above the desert sagebrush. And still as delightful as a century ago, the fields of wild flowers. Desert blooms in the waterless sage, picture postcard landscape. The great chasm of Cathedral Gorge, spires and arches of mineral rock. Valley of Fire State Park, a climax of rock color and eerie forms. Windswept sand dunes, flowing contours forming a shifting pattern in the infinity of serene space. Fantastically beautiful is the horizon, splashed with a golden, crimson, azure green and warm brown hues of mineral color. The setting sun throws a veil of mystic light over mountain and valley. Desert twilight is a study in blue. And night is moonlight and soundless shadows. Something from nothing and nothing but the arid wasteland. Nevada has accepted the challenge, used the best and from the best, created her cities. Reno, famous as the biggest little city in the world, bustling metropolis with modern air-conditioned hotels, movies and shops, 
in an atmosphere of free and easy Western living. Clean streets, desert air, shade trees, fine homes. Las Vegas, still a silver dollar city. Year-round vacation spot. From viewed hat counters to beautiful civic buildings, Las Vegas is becoming more and more a crossroads of commerce, as well as one of the fun capitals of the nation. Elko, chief trade and service center for Nevada's important cattle industry, which centers about Elko County, where saddle-bent cowboys and well-to-do ranchers can buy the finest in leather tooling. Leather grown and toughened on Nevada ranches. The best for those western boots and saddles. Ely is a mining town. A city set in the craggy cliffs of a mountain range. Hub of Nevada's great copper industry. Nevada takes pride in having the smallest state capital in the Union. Carson City, where enterprising lawmakers do everything to make residents in Nevada more attractive and meeting squarely the challenge of not enough population. Some towns live on in memory of past glory, like Virginia City. Once the largest community in the state, in the center of the greatest mining activity in North America. Now, not much more than an interesting sight for tourists. Here on Old C Street, still stand the iron-shuttered frame buildings with their wooden awnings, under which the two-gun quick draw fighters dodged in those roaring days of the wild and woolly west. Despite her few towns of size, churches of all faiths have lifted their spires to Nevada skies. A temple for worship in every community, challenging the obstacles of wide open spaces and thinly populated areas. Nevada, for all its frontier spirit, believes wholeheartedly in the power of the mind and in its education. Here at Reno is the Progressive University of Nevada, dedicated to give full service to all the people. The College of Agriculture, practical courses designed to promote more scientific and profitable farm operations. The Agricultural Experimental Station, offering first-hand experience to the state's future ranchers and farmers. At Nevada's University, the Mackey School of Mines today cooperates with the state and the U.S. Bureau of Mine staff to do far-reaching work for the future of the mining industry. Every year, more highly trained engineers are graduated, better equipped to challenge the vast mineral resources of the state. Here is Nevada's future. All over the wide stretches of the state, there are schools for the youngest children. Nevada law says a school must be provided any place where there are five children of school age and the school is kept open as long as there is an average attendance of three. And in nearly every farming community, 4-H clubs prime the younger set for more advanced work. Junior is given a hand in his education and Sis gets a chance to put the domestic arts to practice, competing for the sought-after prizes in the annual county fairs of the Sagebrush State. The people of Nevada, like the tenacious sagebrush which serves as the state flower, have met the challenge of their state with their own resourcefulness. Across the rugged face of the land move the products of their labors in growing volume, abundant testimony of hard-won success. The measure of the land is wide and there are new goals for more people, people to bring more water to more land, people for further research and ore processing, people for greater production of minerals, people to match the land in which they would live, men and their women and children, people to build on the achievements of the past, to accept the challenge of the still untouched natural resources of Nevada.